Elizabeth, New Jersey catches fire. Fueled by 35,000 chemical containers, the fire burns for 10 hours. The flames ignite explosive products on site. The resulting detonation and fireball rocks nearby communities and commercial and industrial facilities. It also threatens a heavily populated area of up to 50 miles radius. When the fire is finally extinguished, an even more hazardous situation awaits emergency and environmental personnel. The chemical control site is so contaminated that it must be disassembled and cleaned piece by piece. The New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, the DEP, begins the hazardous job of breaking down, decontaminating, and removing everything from the ruins of buildings to storm sewers. Even the soil is removed and replaced with gravel. Even before the fire, the DEP was aware of the range of hazardous materials at the chemical control site. In addition to a wide variety of organic and inorganic chemicals, there were also explosives, radioactive materials, and pathogenic agents. As the post-fire cleanup progressed, workers discovered unmarked cylinders in the rubble. These fire-charred cylinders ranged in size from aerosol cans to six-footers. Some were handmade for specific purposes and did not conform to ASME standards. Their contents and manufacturing origins were unknown. Considering the dangerous nature of materials warehoused at chemical control, protocol specified that these potentially dangerous cylinders be isolated as they were discovered. Further sampling and analysis revealed such widespread contamination that the cleanup of chemical control involved dredging, groundwater treatment, and treatment of contaminated soils among the many tasks. It concluded in 1984 with the disposal of almost all of the contaminated materials. Only the unmarked cylinders remained. Because their contents were unknown, there was no acceptable way to move or dispose of them. Since these cylinders posed a potential threat to nearby commerce, shipping and residences, some form of protection was required. As an interim measure, the cylinders were individually encased in quarter-inch thick steel overpacks specially designed by the Army Corps of Engineers. Before sealing the overpacks, the cylinders were blanketed in sand for extra cushioning. Pressure gauges mounted on the outside of the overpacks monitored internal pressure. An external port also allowed for sampling of the overpacks atmosphere. The 182 encased cylinders, laying lengthwise, were staged in the center of the site. There they remained for five years.